This is the first part of a series of videos relating to calculus. It is important that you understand the basics of differentiating um, and how to differentiate as many type of functions as possible. Um, and I'm going to tackle the most basic ones necessary for a math studies course. Um, make sure you practice extra questions after these videos. Um, I'm going to go through the main ideas roughly. So. Um, the idea of differentiation is the beginning of calculus and you can explain it using several methods but um, and you have many different rules for differentiating different functions but we're going to do the basic differentiation um, which is when you have a function say x to the power of n and let's say there's a coefficient here then the derivative of this is you taking the this power n, multiplying it by your coefficient. So that's that's your new coefficient now, and then you'll have the x term, but then the power will be one less. So that's a complicated way of understanding it. This is the major basic rule you have to know. It doesn't matter if your power is a positive, is a negative, is a fraction, you still apply the same rule. Doesn't matter if your coefficient is a fraction, is a negative, is a decimal, you still apply the same rule. Um, so you need to be comfortable with this um, with this expression. Now, the questions relating to differentiation um, come in different forms. So they might say uh, find the derivative. They might say differentiate. They might say uh, derive, uh, they might say find dy by dx. This is when they, they've given you a function, say y equals to something, and they want you to find the derivative, which means they want you to apply this, they're going to say find dy by dx. They might also say find y prime, that's another um, way to write it. If they gave you the function as a function, in function form, they're going to say find f of prime of x. Um, and so you, you can have different notations for the derivative. Just be comfortable with each and every one. Um, they might also say, which we will tackle in a couple of videos, uh, find the gradient function because this is essentially what uh, differentiation is. I'm not going to go into the background of differentiation, that will be for another video, um, but you are, when you derive functions, you get a gradient, uh, you get the gradient function of that graph. So any of these wordings mean the same thing, so you are still applying the same method. Now if Let's go through some basic examples and do pause the videos and attempt those questions with me. Uh, the most basic example I, you can come up with is, say, um, if you have y equals to x to the power of 4, then the derivative, which is dy by dx, will be you taking the power and multiplying it by the coefficient. Now, the coefficient here, we don't really write it, it's 1. Um, and so you say, well, 4 times 1 is 4. That's us applying this. And then you reduce the power by 1. So 4 minus 1 will be 3. And that's it. That's the derivative. That's, your, that's the gradient function. That's you differentiating. That's you finding dy by dx or y prime. Um, it's all the same process. So this is one example. Let's add a coefficient in there. If I say y equals to 2x. Um, squared, then dy by dx will be, well, it's the power multiplied by the coefficient, that's 4, and then you reduce the power by 1. So 2 minus 1 will be 1. Let's go even further. Let's say you had a fraction, and you had 1 over 2x to the power of 4. You apply the same exact thing, dy by dx, will be, and I'm going to write it just as I did above, um, you're going to take your power, which is 4, 
and you're going to multiply it by your coefficient, which is 1 over 2. And then you're going to take the power and reduce the power by 1, which will be 3. Now, you'll have to simplify this. So 4 times a half or 4 times 1 over 2 simplifies to 2. And so you get this. Um, let's say you had a negative and y was equal to negative 3x cubed. Then dy by dx will be 3 times negative 3. So you need to be careful here. 3 times a negative 3. And then x to the power of, well, we reduce the power by 1, so it's going to be 2. And so this is negative 9x squared. Um, let's try having a single letter. Um, these are quite interesting because soon enough you'll notice a pattern. Now if you if we write the invisible numbers here, the power here is 1, the coefficient here is 1. Well let's apply the same rule. I'm going to take the coefficient, the power multiplied by the coefficient, so that's 1 times 1 which is 1. And then I'm going to take x and I'm going to reduce the power by 1. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to subtract it by 1. So 1 and then minus the 1, so that's, that's the 1 from the beginning. And then I'm going to subtract 1 because that's what I'm meant to do. And I'll end up with a 0. Now, anything to the power of 0, which is a common math rule, is actually equal to 1. So this whole thing, this x to the power of 0, is actually equal to 1. So remember that 1x is the same as saying 1 multiplied by x to the power of 0. Um, so this is 1, which is what we had, multiplied by, well, x to the power of 0 is just 1, which is just 1. And it applies to as many different rules if you want. If I say um, yeah, let's start using different letters now just to get used to. Um, I could say w equals to x, then dy sorry, d, w, by dx will be 1. Um, so in general, if you always have a coefficient to 1, a power of 1, the derivative will be 1. And you'll soon enough notice the pattern. Um, if I add a coefficient in there and say it's 3x, then the same idea apply. I'm going to take the power, which is 1, and multiply it by the coefficient, which is 3, so the the number here will be 3, and then I'll end up with x to the power of 0, which is still 3 times 1, and this 1 comes from the x, which is just um, 3. So soon, again, you'll notice that whenever you have a coefficient of 1, in, sorry, a power of 1, you'll always be taking the um, coefficient only. Now, if we take it a bit further and we say, well, what if we have negative powers? How do we deal with negative powers? Well, when do we actually get negative powers? It's when you have um, numbers in the denominator. So say I have um, 2 over x. Well, to differentiate in the denominator, it's, it's not as straightforward. You can't apply the same rule as above. We need to change it so that it looks something similar to what we had. So um, the rule is, well, this is the power of 1. If I decided to bring it up to the numerator, it's going to end up being x to the power of 2x to the power of negative 1. Now, you do not move the 2. You only move the variable in the denominator. So this will be 2x um, to the power of negative 1. Now, if I want to differentiate this, I'll do negative 1 times 2, which is negative 2. And then I'll have, I'll have x to the power of, well, I had my negative 1, but then I need to subtract 1. Remember the rule from above. You always subtract 1 from the power. And you need to be careful here because the answer will be x to the power of negative 2. So with negative powers, they always get reduced. Now, Let's undo what we did there, just as the same as um, 
just how we lifted that x and we got it to the numerator and changed the power to a negative. Well, I can bring this down and change the power to a positive. So this is also equal to negative 2. Remember, we'll only change the variable x to the power of a positive 2. So you can just fix it back. Now, we can keep it as it is, but when you're using the calculator, you need to be careful with the power of negative 2. Or you can use this. So that's you dealing with um, negative powers. If I had, um, let's say we had a combination of them. Um, we had y equals to 1 over x squared plus 6 over um, 5x. Um, so we'll change it up first. So we haven't derived first. We'll change it up. I'll move this up. So it's going to be x to the power of negative 2. Nothing happens to the 1. It's just the 1 is there. It's just we don't write it next to the x to the power of negative 2. And then in here, I'm going to keep the 6 over 5. And the only thing I'm going to move is the x, which is to the power of 1 here. So x to the power of negative 1 now. And then we differentiate normally. So dy by dx will be, well, negative 2 times the coefficient of 1 here, which we don't write. It will be negative 2. And then, x, and then we reduce the power by 1, so negative 2 minus 2 will be x to the power of negative 3. And then we'll deal with the second part then, and that's negative 1 times this whole 6 over 5, which will give you a negative 6 over 5. And then x will be power of negative 2. So we simplify this further, and we get negative 2. I'll just bring this back to the denominator and change it to a positive power of 3 and well this is a positive and a negative so it's going to be a negative and 6 over 5 and again I'll bring this down and I end up with x to the power of 2. Now I also used a different rule here which I haven't used before which is when you have um, functions with more than one term you differentiate each term separately this is called a sum and difference rule. Um, so nothing special, you just do each one separately, just consider each one and use repeat the differentiation rule on each one. You are allowed to do that. Um, the last type of question I differentiation I want to deal with is when you're differentiating constants. So this is the easiest thing to differentiate. If you have y equals to 5, for example, the derivative will always be 0. No matter what you have, a 5, a 10, a 20, a 100, a 1,000, it will always be a 0. Um, so if I have a function of, say, 5x squared plus 12, then the derivative will be, the derivative will be, well, the derivative of the first one is 2 times 5, that's 10. Then you have x to the power, well, you reduce it by 1, so that's just x. And then the derivative of the constant, which is just a number, has no coefficients attached to it, it's just zero. Um, and that's what you end up with, that's the derivative. So that's as much as I'm going to say about derivatives. Um, in the next video, I'm going to add a couple more um, derivative questions, which you can try. Um, and then further down the series, we're going to go into more depth with some of the differentiation functions.